up, everyone? This is the No Cap Space. I'm Tyler, joined by Greer and Shawnee. And we have a very, very, very special guest today. Kiki Iriofin, forward from Stanford. Kiki, thank you so much for being here today. The first guest in No Cap Space history. So you you get the honor today. Thank you guys for having me. Well, Kiki, I just got to ask, just generally, You've had a you've had a pretty good couple days here recently. Uh, yeah. Dropped thirty six and twelve on Oregon State. Some slight, no free throws, straight buckets. By the way, I peeped that. And then, and then you're getting tweets from Asia Wilson on the timeline as well. You know, something slight. <laughs> I just want to know how life has been recently because you've had a heck of a week or so in in this span. So how's life? Life's been good, honestly. This whole season, life has been good. Um, my whole junior year, even just outside of basketball, life has been really good. Um, so I can't complain. I'm I'm truly blessed. We love that. We love to hear that. And then just expanding out from a fan perspective, life's been good for us too because the Pac-12 has given us battles like ever since conference play has started. So like, what is different about this year in the Pac-12 that it feels more like a gauntlet and every game is is March Madness atmosphere? Honestly, I feel like the Pac-12 has always been like this. I'm biased, but I think we truly have one of the best conferences in the country. Um, but I think there's a little bit like extra oomph because this is the last year. All all 12 of us, we want to be the team that wins the Pac-12 tournament, the last ever Pac-12 tournament, the last ever Pac-12 regular season. So I think, honestly, the intensity of this league is just preparing all of us for March Madness and just giving us a little bit of a head start. But you know, it's super exciting to be a part of this like historic last year. Um, and, it, and it makes every single game, you know, truly exciting because you never know who could win the game. Greer, before you get into it, if I could follow up real quick, what makes the Pac-12 special? Like we know you're biased, but you know, just if, <laughs> if you weren't a West Coast kind of girl, what would make the Pac-12 special to you? I think there's just variety. Like no team is the same. Like some teams are like big dominant. Other teams are like guard dominant. Other teams are uh, even level scoring all across the board. So I think there's so many different playing styles. Some teams are really fast. Some teams are more methodical. Um, so like the scout, you have to scout for every team differently. You can't just apply the same scout for multiple teams. I mean, and you really have to, you know, hone in on every single team, give them enough time. Like during the week, we scout like both teams evenly. Um, we don't have a preference over who we're going to give more time to. So I think that makes it difficult because, you know, you have to be able to memorize both your scouts and we have like quick turnarounds. You have a one day in between the two. So I think also we just have a lot of great players in this conference. Oh, I, I couldn't agree more. Um, this was also like a historic week for the Stanford women's basketball program when Tara um, passed Coach K and she's the all time winning as D1 coach in history. Um, what's it like being a part of a historic night like that? And then, I mean, she's it D1 basketball period mm -hmm. to be there and then like have a career night on top of it. What was it all? Just talk about the atmosphere that night. Yeah, I think we're all still on cloud nine. So we had Monday off. So today was our first day, like all recapping as a team, like what happened this past weekend. I think just seeing all the alums that came back and all the people that shouted out coach Tara and just like congratulated her is like so surreal. Like, I think sometimes I, I can take for granted, like I'm coached by her every single day. I see her every day. So I'm like, okay, it's just coach. But like when you see the impact that she has on other people that she's had on the game, it's truly like a blessing to be a part of. Um, and then honestly, I don't even care about having a career, a career at night. It was just my three pointers that made me super happy and seeing, <laughs> seeing my coaches, seeing my teammates and honestly seeing coach Tara, seeing their reactions to me and just celebrating me. I feel like that was the best, like my highlight from the game, but you know, as a team, we were really like, like locked in the whole entire weekend that we wanted to make sure that we get this dub for coach Tara at home. I wanted to to ask you about that three pointer because the celebration after was tough, Kiki. The blowing <laughs> the kisses to the bench. I saw the video to. today on social. So like, was that like was this a planned thing? Like, oh, when I hit this three, like at some point in my career, like because that was your first career three. Yeah. So like, it was that like already a planned thing? And kind of talk to me about like specifically that reaction with you and Tara blowing kisses back and forth and the bench erupting like that. Yeah, it's been brewing. Last season, Tara was like, you're going to hit a three sometime. You're going to hit a three sometime. But this season, she's been preaching it. Like, she's been telling media, too, like, Kiki's going to hit a three. It's coming. So we've always, like, in the back of our head, like, even in practice, I'll shoot threes, and I'll be, like, practicing how I'm going to celebrate. 
-hmm. I never knew it was going to be the kisses, but in the moment, kisses were, that's what came to my mind. So I just was like, this is for you, Tara. So I blew that one. And then I hit a second one back to back mm -hmm. and I was like, oh my God. <laughs> Again, I, as I said, I'm just still on cloud nine, but just seeing how all my teammates and coaches were like super happy for mm -hmm. me, like that just, that just made my whole night. So you got I, more I celebrations. I heard, yeah, I think you're the queen of celebrations. Honestly, <laughs> I remember when Fran dunked and you had like the CPR. Uh, <laughs> the head top, that everything. That is one of my yeah. all-time favorite clips. <laughs> um, Stanford's currently, you guys are atop of the, the Pac-12 right now. Like what's it going to take for you guys to stay there and go into the Pac-12 tourney as number one seed? Yeah, I think just remaining locked in, um, being very present. And again, like every single team is good. So just you know, focusing on the games that we have coming up, not looking too far in the future, um, giving every every team equal amount of, you know, time and um and scout on them. But I think the biggest thing is just for us to remain locked in and to have fun. I think we play our best when we truly have fun with each other. We're gonna need a, okay. a celebration for for the Pac twelve tournament. If y'all win it, oh, y'all need like a specific celebration for the championship. So you gotta yeah, we'll I, work I, on it. Okay, you gotta you gotta have it brewing. I'm gonna be on the lookout now for it. <laughs> I got you. Okay, so I'm still stuck on the historic night. I need to know, was the jacket Tara got for the win, was it as fire in person as it was showing in the pictures? Mm -hmm. Did he have the chain on with it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> One thing about Tara, she's going to have that chain on. Like, <laughs> you see her, you see the chain. Like That is her. That is her for sure. Um, in terms of the jacket, I think the videos and pictures as beautiful as they are, do not do it justice. Like mm -hmm. seeing it in person is crazy. Like I was telling Tara, like, I'm going to steal your jacket if you leave it somewhere. Like it is <laughs> so beautiful. Like it is so nice. Like even just like the layout and like the design and like the thought going into it, like it is gorgeous. And like, I know she was wearing it all Monday yesterday. Like she was <laughs> that jacket on. So. Yeah. And when with her emotional support chain, like I, I <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'm not taking off a jacket that far. I worked decades for this jacket. Come on now. Right? I'm exactly. not taking that off. Okay, we didn't have backwards hat tar because we had that tar for a good minute yeah. where the celebration was a backwards hat. And then I think we're, she got like a Snuggie or something like last milestone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now she, she got a whole room with just, just different like wardrobe pieces for all, all the right. milestones she got. That's, That's different. <laughs> That's different. <laughs> I keep her dripped out. I like it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Kiki, I, I wanted to ask, uh, I guess, a little bit more generally about uh, the Stanford program, because I feel like Stanford is a, a very unique program in the sense of in this world of transfers and everything. It's a lot easier for for Stanford to to lose talent on the way out than for talent to, to come and transfer in to a, a school like Stanford. So I I kind of just interested in your perspective as someone who is who's kind of stayed the course over your time at Stanford progressively, got more minutes, got more production in those minutes. For you, what do you kind of see as like the philosophy of this Stanford program in this kind of new age where where transfers are are such a heavy element in college basketball? Yeah, I think, you know, my journey has been, you know, kind of all over the place. Um, and I'm I'm glad it's going up like this now. Um, but I think one of the biggest things about Stanford is like they're really about, you know, growing you from a freshman to a senior. So something that Tara always preaches is like, you know, it's not a four-year decision, it's a 40-year decision. So as much as like the transfer portal is like booming right now and it's hot, like they are very, my, my coaching staff is very like strong about, you know, developing their players or like having you like grassroots from your freshman year to your senior year. So they really believe in like, you know, you staying your whole time and like, how can we help develop you to like, you know, be the, the player that you want to be, if you want to play professionally, play overseas. Mm -hmm. Or even if you're like, you know what, I just want to play basketball for four years. How can they help you off the court in like whatever profession you want to do? So. Yeah, that's super dope. And how do y'all balance the athletic or the academic component? Because, you know, we see student athletes doing great things across the country. But like last year, y'all had a doctor that happened to be <laughs> good at basketball. So it's like, you know, y'all also have aspirations off the court. How do y'all manage that? And like, what's your major? And can you explain a little bit of that? Yeah. So just in terms of like time management, we have like a lot of resources available to us, even just as a student minus the athlete part, everybody has like advisors has like, you know, tutoring help. And then adding on the athlete, you have like athletic advisors, athletic tutors, things like that, which are able to accommodate your schedule a little bit more. Um, and then also our coaches, like if there's certain classes that conflict with practice, they're able to like work with me so that I can take the class that I want to take or even like internships and things like that. Um, and then in terms of my major, I'm doing something called design, 
which I know, you know, hearing it, you're like, okay, is she an artist? Is she like fashion? No. So <laughs> design is <laughs> thinking when I read it, I was like, okay, I need, I need more yeah. information. So design is fairly new at Stanford. It used to be called product design, but now it's design and it's under the School of Mechanical Engineering. Um, but it has like, you know, mechanical engineering compo components. There's like AI, like com um, computer science components. And then there's like a human interaction as well. So like I can pick from those, but I really like it because I'm able to like work with people, connect with people. A lot of the work I do is like user research. So I go out into the community and like kind of interview people to see like, what are things that we should be creating, building, what are like need areas that need to be addressed. Um, and then like from there, I can like go into deeper concentration. So mine is like sustainability and how can we, you know, come up with solutions that are also safe for the planet. So. Do you feel like there's- The robots take over. Oh, not the robots, not the robots <laughs> taking over. No, that's always my concern. So like we, we come to you, right? Uh, no. <laughs> no, just, yeah, don't put that on me. That. Don't, I have don't, no answers Don't, don't that. put that on me. <laughs> I, I, I'm interested though with the with the major like that are you able to kind of find ways like you, you mentioned the the people aspect of it mm -hmm. being such a major component for you obviously playing basketball your entire life is there kind of lessons that you've been able to take from the court and and, and kind of apply it to a major like that because I think that's a, a very unique one in that in that sense yeah I think just being an athlete in general like you just have you develop so many qualities such as like time management I'm a captain now I've been a captain in high school so like you know leading a group and like you know making sure everything is like on task I feel like I've learned a lot of things of being an athlete like going through adversity so like sometimes I'm doing projects it's not going the way I need it to go like how do I you know pick up from there and keep pushing so I feel like those qualities that I've gotten from the core I've been able to translate into my schoolwork and just like even like consulting work and stuff that I've done with my with my major. I, you touched on being a leader for this team. Can you talk about how your like, what's your leadership style, right? You've had previous captains that we know and that have come and gone, and but you're you're an upperclassman now. So what's Kiki's uh, leadership style like? Yeah, I feel like I'm like a mother bear, but then in the same time that I'm like mom and like advice and like coddle you, I'm like also like crazy and fiery. Like I like to be like, you got this, like keep pushing. But then I also like to be like, let's go. Like I try to be super <laughs> hype, like try to get the energy up for our team. Um, Honestly, I'm super crazy and like goofy. So I like that and like making people smile and laugh. So I feel like I have like a mix of like, you know, being a leader for our freshmen, being someone that they can rely on, but then also like being someone that can make you laugh and like bring the energy and make you want to go hard on the court as well. So you're kind of a, you know, the the positive vibes, the good vibes. Let's get that going. You're you're not the trash talker, are you? Oh, it depends, honestly. Uh oh, hold on, uh -oh. <laughs> hold on. You ain't gonna move fast. So what's the trash talking style then? Hold on, so we can't. Just I don't. Move past I don't that. really trash talk. If someone starts something, I might say something back. Mm. I really don't like to trash talk, but mm. I do like to like. If someone's trash talking me, I laugh it off. Maybe mm. I'll get a bucket and I'll just be like, huh. Like, oh, that would big. that would hurt. Oh, like you don't have to do much. You don't have to yeah. say much, but you're yeah. like that. that I bucket, mean, when you're when you're up. scoring like the way you are, like you can kind of just <laughs> just get a bucket and just be like, "What are you talking to me for?" Like, like yeah, you know, do the talking, first that's of all. that's exactly. valid. You know. Exactly. So to follow that up, because we we've gotten the opinions of two Pac-12 players mm. uh, on your team, who's the best trash talker, and then in the conference, who's the best trash talker? Ooh. Or okay. We can go out to the nation. Okay. <laughs> On my team, I think it's a tie. It's between Janaya and Cameron. Mm -hmm. I think they are the best trash talkers. They just get so competitive. And it's like, even if you can say stuff back to them, they don't even care what you have to say. <laughs> like what you say is irrelevant. So I, I think they're the best, the best trash talkers. Mm -hmm. Um, in terms of Pac-12, I feel like I really haven't gotten into any like trash talking with anybody. Like honestly, the bigs that I play are super cool. Like we'll battle them at the end. They'll be like, I love playing against you. Like we're super <laughs> chill. So I have no complaints with any of the bigs in the Pac-12. I really don't guard guards that much. So I haven't been talking to them. So, but I'd say on my team, it's Cameron and Janaya for sure. Okay, because Cam's name come up before. So. Yeah, yeah, this is not the first time we've heard Cameron when it comes to trash talking. I'm it's it's been brought up. Oh, that's funny. Uh, I, I did want to ask, we, we've talked about your major. We've talked about obviously basketball. On the rare occasion that Kiki gets a day off, what is the day off looking like? Because I can't even imagine what your, your workload between that major and, and basketball is. Yeah, so I'm a big napper. So honestly, I'm sleeping most of the time when I have free time. 
Um, but let's say like in an ideal world, like I've been really involved in like the fashion and like modeling things that we have on campus. Mm-hmm. So like there's something called Fashion X and I'm actually modeling in our spring showcase like later oh. in February. So like that kind of stuff is really cool to me and like just seeing like what my peers like can make and then I'll be like, I'll wear it for you and I'll walk in it for you. Um, I love being super girly girl. So like I like dressing up, going out with my friends, taking pictures. Um, So I'd say a lot of my free time is like hanging out with my friends, just dressing up and doing what I wouldn't do on the basketball court because I feel like sometimes on the court, I like have this persona, like I'm aggressive. I'm like, yes, like get down and dirty and then off the court, I like to be like, hi, I'm Kiki, like (laughs) like, girly and stuff. So. Yeah. This Barbie has duality. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, just kind of switching gears a little bit. What would, you know, you talked about this being the finale and everyone wants to go out with a bang. What was the reaction like when you found out, like, this is going to be the last year of the Pac 12? And what was kind of the response amongst, you know, your peers? Yeah, I think, you know, we were all kind of like sad because we're like, we love playing in the Pac-12. A lot of us are on the West Coast anyway. So it's like, you know, our families can go to a lot of the games, even if it's not just coming to Stanford games. I'm from Los Angeles. So like, I love playing at the UCLA USC's. Um, Mm -hmm. So I feel like that part was like the biggest thing is like our families and friends won't be able to come like watch us play as much unless it's visiting Stanford. Um, But outside of that, we're just like, you know what, it's kind of out of out of our control. So like, what can we do is like, make our mark so when people look back on pack 12 they be like wow the last ever stanford won everything and that's our yeah. plan. hey that's valid that's so you just mentioned that you're from la i, I too am from la so I, i'm familiar with your game i know you're a harvard westlake grad and harvard westlake produces like outstanding athletes um i want you to agree or disagree with this statement Southern, I mean, girls basketball runs through Southern California. Agree. Okay. <laughs> that was quick. Agree. That was quick. So, so make the case. What, 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 what is it about the talent in in Southern California that is just different from the rest of the nation in your eyes? Well, one, just going into high school, we have so many California club teams, which mm-hmm. I feel like other states maybe have like one Nike team or like one club team, like that's your main team. California, we have at least four that are like the top club teams that you can play for because there's so many great athletes. And then even just in the Pac-12, like we have Juju, we have Rhea, we have myself, we have uh, Brooke on my team. Like we have so many people that are literally just from SoCal, not even talking about California, just SoCal that are like making waves in their own respective programs. And I know there's so many more that I'm like leaving off as well. USC, the whole program, UCLA, they have so many local kids as well. Charisma, I played with Charisma. I played with uh, Kayla Padilla on USC. So just a lot of great talent. Um, and I think it's super cool, you know, us local kids being able, again, being able to play against each other again in the Pac-12, which I think makes this year also really sweet and special. Yeah, I I, I love that. And I, I do have to ask, obviously, you know, we, we hear you talking about the Pac-12, all the talent in it. So you got to go into these games, like, really mentally locked in, for sure. For sure. What's on the game day playlist? What is like the the key key game day playlist? Getting ready for the game. What get, name some couple artists? Name maybe a couple favorite songs that you got on the playlist ready for game day. Yeah, so it really depends, and I have like like stages of my game day. So like mm-hmm. when it's pregame meal time, maybe it's like a little bit of R and B, maybe a tad bit of rap. Now when it's like you put your lashes on, get your hair ready mm. before you get on the court. It's literally all gospel. Like, I've just been like, yes, Jesus. <laughs> like, it's like, I don't think I can listen to rap anymore to get me like, it's literally just a lot of gospel, a lot of like upbeat, high, mm-hmm. high energy gospel, or even Afro beats too. I'm Nigerian as well. Mm-hmm. I feel like I've been like, you know, bouncing with those two before games. And I think it honestly just like centers me and like allows me to just like be present and be like, this is the task that I have at hand one game at a time, one day at a time. Um, so that's been working for me lately. So I'll, I'll keep it up. Hey, yeah, I don't change it because it's working. I need to dive deeper into that gospel playlist because I'm I'm an <laughs> old school kind of choir. You know, give me the John P. Keys, give me the Fred Hammond, some old Mary Mary. What what's on your gospel playlist? Uh, well, there's a lot of Kirk, a lot of Kirk Franklin. There is some Mary Mary. Um, there are also some like Yoruba, which is like a Nigerian tribe, which is where I'm from. Mm-hmm. There's some of that in there. Um, honestly, it's just a blend of a lot of things. There's some Naomi Renee, 
Um, but yeah, those are some of the the main artists that I've been listening to. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I'm with all of that talent in the California area, and specifically where you're from, what was your welcome to college moment? Or did you have one since you've already seen them, you know, in high school? Yeah, I can't remember like an in-game, actually, I lie, I lie, I lie. No. <laughs> uh oh, uh oh, it's coming back, it's coming back. Uh, yeah, it's coming back. But I honestly, I think my welcome to college happened in practice before it happened in a game. You know, coming in, I never played against like, bigs that were like really bigger than me or like stronger like or like at least my same level like usually in high school and I'm guarding the other post player I'm like oh I'm quicker than her or I'm stronger mm -hmm. than her but now I'm in college where they're quicker than me they're stronger than me they're taller than me so I think navigating that I got my shot blocked like a hundred times every single day so that was a lot to that's like mental like mm -hmm. I had to deal with that and like work through that and then in terms of you know, welcome to the league. There was a few times my freshman year when whenever I was guarding someone, they'd be like, I have the freshman, give me the ball. And that mm -hmm. was just like, like kind of mm -hmm. second. Like, oh, God. <laughs> like, oh, I have the freshman, give me the ball, give me the ball. And I would try my best. It's crazy. Like, <laughs> nameless is crazy. And there was multiple, multiple yeah. players oh, no. that did this. And I'm just like, ooh, damn. So I was like, I had a <laughs> But well, yeah. Nothing if not resilient. So we love that. <laughs> We love that. Um, so, I mean, Stanford is, you know, one of the premier programs in the country. You guys get to play everywhere. Um, actually, Shawnee and I came out to Stanford with Palo Alto last year to see you guys play South Carolina. But I am super interested, you know, as basketballs continue to grow, specifically women's basketball, where are some other places that you play when you're like, oh, this atmosphere is incredible. And uh, I'd love to keep playing in atmospheres like this. Yeah, definitely when we went to South Carolina my freshman year, I didn't even play in that game, but just the warm-ups there, mm -hmm. and that arena was sold out. I was like, oh my mm -hmm. gosh, this is insane. Like, never seen anything like that. Of course, when we went to the Final Four my freshman year as well. Like, the arena, like, went all the way up like this. So, like, there's you would look up, and there's people, like, looking down <laughs> at you. Like, it was crazy. Um, And then I'd say, like, playing at Tennessee also my freshman year, that arena was insane the fans loud everything I was like oh my gosh like I've never I've never played in environments like that so like I think that was super cool and super special to experience my first year in college yeah. you, you talk about your, your freshman year there I, I guess just kind of generally like within your your basketball game when you think back to that freshman year you're going to all these all these matchups and everything and, and think to, to where you are now mm -hmm. where do you feel like the biggest growth has been for you as a player as we've kind of seen your steady incline uh, with your production and everything yeah definitely you know my game has developed my IQ has developed a lot I feel like a lot of the times I was like okay I'm gonna do this move without reading the defense where I feel like now I'm a little bit more patient I'm still working on not rushing but I'm a little bit more patient and like let me read the defense um, I think I face up a lot more now than I did in the past mm. um, and then I think the biggest thing is just like my whole mental like my mindset I had a lot of self-doubt my freshman year um, where I feel like now I've like you know come into the player I am I've been a lot more confident and a lot more comfortable um and I feel like when I play free like that that's when I play my best basketball so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. no and I, I'm sorry going back to the previous one because it was funny me and Greer did go to the Stanford U. I'm from South Carolina so I was gonna get into a SC versus SC debate but you know we don't have to do that <laughs> but after the game like one of the fans shook my hand and was like good game and I was like Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome to be here. So, like, when you were saying, like, y'all be shaking hands and saying good game afterwards, that that's funny because I I can uh I can attest to that. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's funny. I can't imagine going to the post arena. Just hey, good game in the in the crowd is that's funny. That's that's a, that's amazing. I love that. Uh, I I did want to ask. Uh, you mentioned your your face up game in your offense, and you rocked the one leg sleeve. I don't mm. think it's hard to kind of piece two things together here. You got the tweet from Asia, like we mentioned at the beginning. I just, for, for you, it doesn't even have to necessarily be specifically Asia, but are you someone that's actively watching the W and, and kind of taking notes as you presumably prepare to try and make it to the W and, and kind of how are you watching these games and watching these professional players and, and adding to your own game? Yeah, I feel like last summer, like I've always watched the W, but I feel like last summer is when I was really like not just watching to watch, but like watching to understand and to learn and kind mm -hmm. of like read, like how do they play defense? How do, you know, how do people score? How do like people in the positions that I would play? Because I probably wouldn't play where I'm playing right now. Like 
how do those people play and how are they getting buckets or how do, how are they guarding defending um so I feel like I've been like more intentional about that and in terms of teams I'm always going to be LA Sparks like always 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 mm-hmm. but you know I do like look up to Asia and like just seeing her game um and a lot of people have compared me to her in the past so I've always been like okay let me like learn more let me see mm-hmm. um and I do see a lot of similarities um especially in the face-up part um leg sleeve of course was inspired by her but again I just think you know as I'm preparing to play professionally and I'm like getting closer to the end of my college career it's been like more intentional about watching basketball even when I watch the NBA I'm like okay let me oh look at this cut look at that Mm. um so just not just watching the watch but like how can I take something from this and learn something from this yeah. Who are a couple other players you've been looking at since you said, like, you know, you might play a different position? Because that, that's really key, like knowing what you're going to be doing at the next level, because it might be different from what you're doing now. So who are a couple players you've been looking at? Yeah, well, I feel like for the most part, I've been looking at rookies and just even yeah. just seeing how like the work, the rookies that have made rosters, like what are they doing? Because <laughs> it is different, like maybe in, in college, you are like the go to, you are the scorer, but like, what are you able to bring to the table? Um, so like someone that I played with my freshman year, Lexi, like, you know, she was great and huge for us. And like, just seeing like how she translated to the league and like, she's been doing the little things defensively guarding, you know, Stewie and things like that, just like being very scrappy. I'm like, okay, you know what? Sometimes my shot might not fall or sometimes I'm not, I might not even be the the third or fourth person, you know, um, in terms of like getting the ball. So I'm like, what else can I do to impact the game? So I feel like a lot of the, the other things that I've noticed by rookies is just like, how can you impact the game without, you know, being a scorer? Like, what are some other things that you can bring to the table? What are things that are going to keep you on that roster? So I feel like that's been like the, the biggest thing that I've been seeing. Hey, because Lexi had Stewie a little stressed out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, uh, like the maturity, uh, I really appreciate the maturity that you're, you're approaching this with. Um, I think it's going to like do wonders for you. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you weren't, I don't know. Maybe I don't know if this is controversial to say, but you weren't chosen on the Pac-12 preseason all team, right? Like, um, did you take note of that? And I don't I don't think that's fueling you. I think you obviously wanted to have a, an incredible season like you're having so far. But did you did you notice that? Oh, yeah. I took notes even last year. I yes, took ma'am. notes. Like, yes, ma'am. <laughs> I took notes, but it, it's not so much motivation, but it's just I'm like, OK, count me out. That's fine. I kind mm-hmm. of like the underdogness, like everybody's like, oh, we never knew about her. Like we weren't expecting, like, I like that. Like, I don't want to be like, oh my gosh, Kiki, Kiki. Like, no, I like to be the underdog and kind of like not prove myself, but like, she like, this is, this is who I've been. And now you're just noticing. Hey, well, you're proving them all wrong. If you are already, you are absolutely doing that. Kiki, we appreciate your time so much. The first guest in the no cap space. And I don't think you told one single lie the whole time. It was all ball, no lie here in the no cap space. Kiki, thank you so much. Thank you.